What's up guys, it's Bailey. Welcome back to the channel and thanks for tuning in to a video that's going to be a review of the Huda Beauty Matte and Metal Melted Shadows. I'm gonna talk about these, swatch them, and also compare them to some similar but not identical products out there. I really think these are unique. And then I also wanted to share a few of the ways that I like to wear these because, I mean, spoiler alert, I, I think they're pretty cool and they have a lot of versatility if you wanna play around with how you wear them. So let's go ahead and dive in. So these retail for 25 bucks. There are five shades total within the collection. I purchased three, I think like the day they launched on Sephora. In the US anyway, they are exclusive to Sephora, but that might be totally different worldwide since I know Huda Beauty is a global brand. But in the US, Sephora is where you'll be able to find them. And I was first intrigued by these when I saw Huda post about these on her YouTube channel. She said they were totally unique. You know, as she was showing these to vendors, they agreed they were very unique. She demonstrated how to use them on her eyes and they looked really easy and I was hooked. So I picked them up. And I have to say that although the format is similar to some other things I'm going to talk about here, they are pretty unique and the formula itself is really stellar. So on one end you have a matte finish cream product and on the other end you have a metallic slash and or glittery cream product. So together you can go all matte, you can go all glittery, or do some combination of the two. On the matte side it comes with a doe foot applicator and I believe in that video I watched and then elsewhere I've seen online the tip is to put three dots on the lid or the crease or whatever it is you're applying and then two to three dots on the lower lash line and then go and blend that in with either a finger or your brush. I have used both a finger and a brush. For these, both work, but I do prefer a brush, especially as I'm blending the product up through my crease and up into my brow bone. Then for the metallic -y glitter side, you actually get something closer to a liner brush. It does pick up a lot of product though, so I find more often than not, I have to wipe the excess here on the rim, but it is really good in that you don't have to go back and forth to really lay down a good amount of product. It just takes less layering, which takes less time, and I personally like that about a product. So like I said, before I bought three of the five shades that are available and just in looking at the shade ranges that I initially purchased online and even after purchasing seeing them swatched on Instagram things like that I feel like overall the range leans very pink and plum undertoned hopefully she expands it in the future maybe this was just like the tester shade she put out there for this first launch but it's a little bit limiting to those that find pinks and plums flattering to their skin tone and hopefully in the future she broadens it to maybe some golden or even neutral undertones. The first shade I got was Faux Fur and Bamboo Hoops. Each of these have their own individual names. Faux Fur is the matte shade and it is pretty much my skin tone. So really for me this feels like less of an eyeshadow when I apply it and more like an opaque primer or base because it really does a good job at canceling out any sort of discoloration, those fine capillaries that show through on my eyelid. It does a really good job at canceling those out. And then Bamboo Hoops is the glittery shade and it is this beautiful soft golden glitter with a little bit of a pinky shift to it which is what I'm wearing across my lid right now but I'll do the full rundown of what I'm wearing right now later when I get to that other shade I'm wearing. The next duo I picked up was Bubble Bath which is the matte shade. It I would say is similar similar in lightness to faux fur but it's more pink. The undertone here is more pink and then the glittery end of things is called Pink Champagne and it, it's pretty much what you would imagine from a glitter that's named that. It's a soft soft pink and then has a hint of silver shift undertone to it. And then the last duo I got is Private Jet. That's the matte shade over here. It is more of a deeper yet still soft pink. And then the glitter on the other end of that is called Shimmering Sunset. And this has really beautiful pinky copper tones to it with a hint of gold as well. So it's a little bit more of a complex glitter compared to the other two shades that I have. And overall, the shades within each of these duos is very complementary both together as well as intermediate mixed with each other. On my eyes today, I applied faux fur all over the lid, and then I went in with the cream shadow private jet, that one that I just talked about. I put that in the inner corner and blended it out. And then to top it all off, I went in with bamboo hoops and applied that all over the lid. And I feel like that really brought out that pink undertone I was mentioning in bamboo hoops. The formula with these is really, really nice, especially with the matte shades. A little bit with these goes a long way as well. The, I, I totally get why they recommend dotting across the lid because I went a little heavy handed one time with one of the more pigmented shades that I have, private jet. and it just, I mean, I could blend it to full opacity all the way up to my eyebrow. Like if you take the full doe foot instead of doing the tiny little dots, 
it, it goes a little bit crazy. So be careful there, stick with the instructions unless you want a really strong eye look with a lot of product to go around. But I would say that's a good thing that you don't need a lot of product to get the look you're going after. And then they are really easy to blend, both the shimmer, but especially the matte, matte, Pressed shadows can be hard. I feel like matte creams can be a little hard too. ELF has standalone matte cream shadows and they, you need a little bit more to layer on. Sometimes they can go a little patchy. They're good, but they're just a little bit harder to work with than these. So it was really nice to see a solid matte cream formula. Likewise, on the other end with the metallics, they apply nice and smoothly. They have a metallic base with glitter mixed in. So it's not like it's a clear base with glitter that you apply over top that you really need a base to go over. Over, it's kind of a standalone to where you could use the matte base or you could just wear it alone and still have that metallic base with that glittery shift over top. The, and, and they are also very easy to blend out. They don't get super patchy or anything like that, like can happen with some of the other products that I'm gonna talk about here. The one thing that I wanna caution you against just because I didn't like how it looked on my, or felt on my lids personally, is being, again, a little too heavy handed with the glitter side of things, just like the matte, except with the glitter, if you go too heavy, you pile it on a little bit too thick, then it can get a little bit crumbly, especially around the edges, wherever there's a barrier, which for me tends to be the crease area. It can get a little bit crumbly. I experience a little bit more fallout. So when I apply, whenever I apply these, unless it's like a liner or something where it's supposed to be thick, I do try and blend it out as best I can because it's still gonna retain that pigmentation, but you're not gonna get that thick feeling on your lid and that crumbliness that comes with a thick eye product. Now onto some products that look similar, but aren't in case you're interested. The first off is the L'Oreal Infallible paints. These are the dual ended cream eyeshadows. They have a huge shade range here. Like if Huda Beauty expands these, I would love to see it more in line with this shade range. But to me, the formula of these from L'Oreal is just not nearly as good. There aren't glitters in here as well. I mean, they they verge on metallic -y glitter, but for the most part, it's like either a matte slash satin and then a more metallic slash hints of glitter is the combo you get. It's nowhere near as extreme as these from the Huda Beauty. And like I said, I just much prefer for the formula of Huda. The L'Oreal take a little bit more working with. They have a longer dry time. Oh, I don't think I mentioned that. The Huda Beauty dry super, super fast. Not so fast that you can't work with them, but like once they're dried, you don't have to worry about them transferring or creasing if you have slightly hooded eyes like me. These are gonna be especially good for you because you, you don't have to worry about like looking up or just blinking in general and seeing, you know, glitter transfer up to your eyebrow. <laughs> and that's not necessarily something that I could say about the infallible paints. Then the other products that are super similar are the Revlon Photo Ready Eye Arts. And I love these. I've talked about these for years. However, they're really not similar to the Huda Beauty because on one, you do have a glitter on one end. These feel a lot more like, kind of like I mentioned earlier, where it's a glitter suspended in a clear or even a clear tinted base, but it doesn't have that metallic base because on the other end, you have a metallic base that you lay down across your eyes. So there is no matte component to these. It's a similar sort of concept, but it's really unique that you get this matte component component in here in such a good formula. Okay, now onto the five ways that I have tended to like wearing these. Hopefully they can provide some inspiration for you if you're considering these or if you have them and just looking for fun ways to wear them. So first off, I mean, like I said, you can go either or all matte, all shimmer, but if you're combining the two, one thing that I like to do is apply the glitter as a wing. Although now that I think about it, you could totally do that in reverse too. I have not personally, I don't know how the matte would lay over the shimmer texture, but it's certainly something you could try for a more negative space type effect that would be really cool. You can also apply the glitter to the inner corner. That is actually something I did for New Year's with the shade Bamboo Hoops. I was wearing glitter on the lips, so I didn't want to overdo it with glitter, but I felt like I couldn't not wear these for New Year's because it's the perfect time. So I had my glitter lips and then I applied faux fur all over my lid and then just popped a little bit of those bamboo hoops in the inner corner and blended it out with a brush. It just provided the perfect little bit of sparkly shimmer, eye-catching detail. Of course, you can also wear them all over the lid like I have here. Again, the tip for that is to just make sure it is blended out really, really well so it doesn't get too thick in any particular place, but love wearing it across the lid. And then you can also do that really popular kind of glitter cut crease where you just apply it in your crease. Now, I'm not gonna lie, I don't think I'm the best example of this. I have done it and I really like the interesting dimension it gives my eyelids, but it's nowhere near like what you see on Instagram. I'm not naive to that. But just know it is something you could do, especially with the way that these come with that 
pointed eyeliner like brush with the glitter it's like made perfectly for doing more detailed glitter work if you so choose and then the last way you can wear it is combining them all together like I don't think we should feel stuck just using one shade with the other like I did today where I combined two different matte shades and then put one of the shimmers over top and found that it created a completely different effect than just wearing the duo together I think that's a really good way to work with these and find new fun looks that you can create with them so that's my review those are my thoughts I really hope you enjoyed hearing that as well as the different ways I like to wear these let me know what you think down in the comments below and let me know if you're gonna pick these up are you interested is it a pass for you in 2019 I'm trying to be more purposeful with my makeup purchases and just truly really try and go for things that look unique and are totally different and it was kind of hard to tell that that would be the case with these before buying but I'm pretty happy to say post purchase that yeah I feel like they are something that isn't already out there and they're really done well so again hope all that information was helpful please don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and I will catch you in the next video bye guys